All right, welcome again farmers. We are back with our green maize production challenge. And uh, by now, you know yours truly, Mrs. Mwamba, uh, that challenged us on social media. And uh, what excites me more than anything is that uh, she has not, not, not now uh, wholly owned us. She said, can we come and do these things? Can we come and put them on video so that every other farmer that's doing green maize can learn from this journey and see what they can replicate on their farms. That's really, really a heart for the nation. That's a heart for so many others that were not courageous enough to say, hey, why are you? Uh, where is the 150,000 kwacha <laughs> from a hectare of green maize? Uh, Mrs. Mumba, thank you so much again today. And what's again even more exciting is that you've been joined by a gentleman behind you there that I'll allow for you to introduce. Okay, yeah. Um, so this is Mr. Mumba, my better half. Wonderful. Oh, my, my, my proper my half. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, and uh, he's been very supportive and uh, actually he's already planning on us expanding this into into another area, in another farm. So definitely, I think we, we've already touched one farmer here and uh, we hope that whatever it is that we're doing here is going to work for everyone that for is watching. Everyone else. Yeah, that's, that's exciting to already hear that we are scaling from here mm -hmm. and uh, we are very positive that uh, we are scaling with everyone that is listening to us. I forgot to introduce my colleague Denson, uh, always headbutting with me, exchanging uh, notes uh, so that we make sure we come and bring to you content that is practical uh, uh, so that uh, we scale down on jargon and just make sure the language is palatable and it can be uh, taken and used by all of you. So today we are continuing and we are, as you can see, almost getting to four leaves on the plants. So by the third leaf, we, our program shows we need to come in with our first top dress. Earlier on, when we were talking about uh, 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 our nutrition program, I, I desist from calling it a fertilizer program. I call it a nutrition program because I want to appreciate the value of the organic matter in the soil. I want to appreciate the value of the manure. I want to appreciate, appreciate the value of uh, even the synthetic fertilizers, whatever product we have chosen. We, get, we gave a highlight of the choice of products earlier on. Uh, we are going with uh, a beso fertilizer uh, that supplied our nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium mainly for, for a start. We put some zinc on the seed. Um, uh, we realized our beso fertilizer had the boron, which will be very useful for reproduction as it begins to give us a size cob that we are looking for. But we also realize it's now going to be accelerating in the way it is putting proteins uh, for, for, for growth and so we need to quickly come in with top dress and the amount of top dress we recommended here is 300 kgs per hectare but because of our soil type if you remember we said she had an effective uh, uh, cation exchange capacity that did not allow us to go with 300 kgs at once. And so the guidance in there was for us to split it. Mm -hmm. Earlier on, we thought we would split it into three applications, into two applications, but we'd rather split it into three so that we get even much better uh, use efficiency so that we are not losing uh, uh, most of the fertilizers that we are applying, as happens to people that uh, just go in once. And so today we have come with a product called ammonium sulfate. Ammonium sulfate is just a product that has got nitrogen and sulfur, both uh, are nu uh, nutrients responsible for protein uh, synthesis, for the making of protein, which basically we are uh, all made up of. Uh, I am protein myself. There is lots of protein in, uh, in, in the maize that is um, uh, coming up now. And so today we are uh, gathered to just apply Ammonium sulfate. The product looks a little like that and the rate that we are using today is uh, 100 kgs per hectare. 100 kgs per hectare. When we, remember when we used 300 kgs per hectare of vessel, we said for our 70 meter lengths, 
we had two uh, and a half kgs per row of line. Uh, I was just checking in with Denson as we came and I was asking him, now that we are at 100, uh, scaled down from 300, how much uh, should it be per, um, per, per whole row? So our calculation came down to 830 grams for a whole row of uh, 70 meters. Uh, wonderful. So 830 uh, farmers, um, we don't mean to, this shouldn't be a very complicated journey. We were at three times the amount that we are putting today. Uh, if you remember, I showed you that in my arms, um, we were about that size um, uh, of base of fertilizer. We could easily be uh, saying that we are around that size per meter for today because I've divided it into three. If you see, that's like one part. This is like two parts in there. Mm. So that is what I take and I put my meter row and I just come and sprinkle like that mm. and go back. So once I have a picture in my head that's looking like that, if I repeat it 10 times, it will stick. And I have a picture in my head that what I picked looked like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, about 83 grams per meter row and, and, and we keep uh, going and spreading per meter and we keep going and spreading per meter and as you can see in the background our irrigation is running so that the water is helping to mineralize uh, the product already and it will be getting into the soil and the plant will lift it uh, from the roots. So that, this is um, really how you go about uh, applying mm -hmm. uh, for effective distribution of product so that you don't have one plant having a party when another is starving. Remember, the money is going to, our money is coming from each, each one, one of them. Yeah. yeah, so uh, having seen this, I, I, maybe a question that you have that maybe another farmer out there will actually uh, have uh, on this demonstration. Sure, if I may ask one. Yeah. So when we put, uh, when we put the basil, yeah. you asked us to dig and yeah. then put that, that under and then cover it. Yeah. But for this one, we seem to be leaving it just on top. Yes. Is there a reason for that? Is there a risk that the fertilizer could also be wasted in, with this way? Certainly, there, there could be a risk of waste, but um, the basal fertilizer, uh, it, it's actually called basal, and we talked about that earlier, because we have to go and put it deep below mm -hmm. the seed. Yes. Uh, deep in the soil, below the seed. We cover it, so usually to protect it from runoff, mm -hmm. one, and then to protect the nitrogen from running away uh, from uh, the, the fertilizer granules mm -hmm. uh, because of exposure one. to heat. Um, in this case, the biggest compromise for us is, are we going to be digging mm -hmm. so that we can bury the top dress also? Yes, for urea especially, we like to come and dig on the side of a plant mm -hmm. and put the fertilizer and cover because urea, uh, uh, it evaporates at very low temperatures. Mm -hmm. So in order to protect it, we cover it like that. Otherwise, we stage it. In our program now, we have some urea, but it's staged for the last mm -hmm. when the plants would have risen and have a good cover, mm -hmm. protect against direct sunlight and direct heat, and we will apply it early hours of the morning okay. to avoid the, the sunlight. For this ammonium sulfate product, our compromise is should we be opening the risk of injuring the roots, mm. the roots that are supposed to actually be uptaking uh, the, the product is what we are trying to avoid. Okay. And so in trying to avoid that, we just throw it on the top so that we are not uh, again losing the most because we opened and have injured our roots. Mm -hmm. At the time when you have gone to uh, center pivot irrigation, as mm -hmm. an example, some of these products can be mixed at your uh, center, at your uh, fertigation uh, area, and then they are run through irrigation, irrigation and they come straight with the water, with the irrigation water, and then it will be sinking in there. Mm -hmm. Then you will have improved efficiencies even more than where we are. But I think this, which is literally called like 
a broadcast, broadcast for commercial guys they will go in with what is called a vicon or a fertilizer spreader mm -hmm. and it will be going around and just spreading everywhere mm -hmm. and it's sitting on top and then they come with an irrigation mm -hmm. that's why i emphasize as you can see we have irrigation running mm -hmm. so that as we are applying the dissolution the dissolving of the product um already is happening yeah and, I, and I do have um, a question well, yes please. well not so much a question i think much more a clarification yeah uh, most farmers uh -huh. including myself yeah for when you're growing maize yes it's d uh -huh. and then urea yes yes so i think maybe you, you might need to kind of point out a little bit more in terms of using the ammonium nitrate because most people are rushing into urea when you said urea actually comes at the end uh -huh. i think that's where most some of the problems do come in because what i know is i'm going to put in compound d uh -huh. and then i'm going to put in my urea and i should get the yield that i'm looking for yes so yes. i think maybe uh, that's i think one area that we are kind of skipping uh -huh. because most people don't really understand that okay yes urea comes in but it's not at this stage uh -huh. yeah, let so. me already bring it back uh, home very close to home uh, mrs mamba we we have a country that's using inputs that have got a potential of 10 to 15 tons per hectare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we are getting two to two and a half tons per hectare. One of the major reasons is the phrase that goes, you are what you eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've been just, the, our maize has just been feeding on compound D and urea. Mm -hmm. uh, I highlighted in an earlier video that every plant will need up to 16 elements. Yeah. The compound D and urea has got four. Mm. Mm. So there is a deficiency of 12. Okay. Uh, some of those may be found in the soil, but if I grow maize three, four, five times, the plants will be depleting that mm -hmm. account that yeah. is resident in the soil. And if I'm not replenishing, I'll go to the ATM and I find there is, there is no money. <laughs> so the plants begin to find no money because we have no nutrients, because we have not been... Um, applying what they are uh, depleting mm -hmm. and uh, the common phrase is eh, munda wasila which is again deforestation as agriculture and crop production is w the biggest uh, uh, contributor to deforestation and the and the carbon footprint mm -hmm. uh, everywhere so in running away from all those things in in avoiding um, a crop that is um, that, that, that is deficient of nutrition, we start with that soil analysis. Mm -hmm. Whatever cost that was, uh, Mrs. Mamba, the joy we have is that we can use it for a period of three years. Okay. Or we can use it for three crops. Mm -hmm. And we will already know where we are. We can already depend on the readings there to determine uh, having had been here at the first year, and having had used these products yeah. and having had yielded so much, we know that the plants extracted so much. Mm. So we could be in this level and by third year, we may not be very sure. So can we go back and take another, uh, submit more samples, do analysis and we will, we will be on, uh, on, on our 10 tons, 15 tons targeting again. So we are looking for a 150,000 kwacha per hectare crop in mm -hmm. here. We can't compromise with compound D and urea. Mm -hmm. No wonder we've been using the actual correct product that makes uh, the crop that will come out of here talk to us and say, I am what I ate. We, we are done with demonstrating our top dress fertilizer. I'm sure the, the, the guys will take over now and just uh, top dress for the first time, uh, the, the, the first portion of the crop. And uh, as Sydney reminds you, uh, please make sure timelessly you are uh, uh, top dressing uh, the other plantings that follow. Uh, I just wanted at this time to also get your feedback uh, on today's uh, uh, practice. What, what is your feel? What is your feedback? Okay. Um, first of all, I'm going to talk about the fertilizer. I think uh, you, uh, in my questions, Mm -hmm. I talked a lot about the use of uh, compound D and urea. Yes. So for me, to it's it's very enlightening to know that it's not just urea. Yes, urea will be used, but there are other components of different kind of fertilizer, which is ammonium sulfate that is required.
for the crop. I think this is something that uh, I didn't know. Uh. Genuinely, uh, when I, I, I didn't know, it was today when I knew that you needed to, you know, to put in ammonium sulfate. So I hope that this is something that others can also, you know, uh, be able to follow sure. and actually do. And I think that we can actually get the kind of yield that we're looking for. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Momba? Any yeah, no, I think extra just, thoughts? sure, just supporting that, you know, me, I'm a Pontini. So <laughs> all of this stuff is, uh, is very helpful. Uh, just learning how... I, I like the way you explain it, uh, relating also to our own body. Yes, I think yes. the more we think of a plant from the perspective of our own and nutrition, amazing, amazing. I think it, it helps. That's because true. otherwise it looks like you are spending money yes. rather than uh, thinking you are actually feeding a crop, yes. which could be uh, very, very beneficial. So mm -hmm. thank you very much. And we are looking forward to continuing this journey with you. Wonderful. I, I appreciate your feedback. I hope it's the same for you with everyone out there because the aim at the end of the day is to make Zambia productive. This food basket that we talk about in Zambia, uh, we like for the, the, the knowledge that will take us there to be spread everywhere. And um, Sitco is your home of bumper harvest and we will have to actualize this thing. I will in the next segment highlight to you um, how urea is actually coming at the end. Okay. because urea is actually harder for younger plants to break down. Mm. So we want a plant with bigger muscle to break it down. Ammonium sulfate is perfect for these younger plants because they do not have so much energy mm -hmm. to labor breaking down. And so we will come and highlight those things also so for the benefit of the learners. And at the end of the day, it is a home of bumper harvest. So if you want to know how urea and ammonium sulfate differ and how plants utilize them, you don't want to miss the next segment. Join us again. Let's, uh, let's take this right seed to bumper harvest. Thank you.